Fuck, fuck it, like. Yeah, just get to it. All right, welcome back to the Paint Trips Podcast. We're here with uh, William Romani, last right? Yes, sir. All right, so you're my very first returning guest, man. Oh, yeah. So thank you for coming out again. Appreciate and, it. Um, yeah, let's get it started, man. Mm-hmm. Um, you were showing me your badass case. Dude, um, Amazon's like my best friend right yeah, now. Yeah, man. You I got all, all your Prisma colors it. in there? Let me open them all up. Yeah, this is pretty fun. I need to... You can oh, still yeah. tell it's new because yeah, I haven't like, fucking painted or drawn on it yeah. or labeled it. Or put it's not full of fucking paint. Pencil shavings. And yeah. Are you gonna put stickers on this shit or what do you think? You, you know how it is. You never. You always want to keep know. them clean yeah, and then <laughs> you get That's one. Fair, you're yeah. like, oh, this will look cool here, and then by the end of the fucking week, you have them all filled up. I have a box, uh, like a container. Not a sticker box. The, you got it. Well, no, I have. It's. I have everything stickered out, honestly. Uh-huh. But I have a box, like a conta- uh, one of those plastic containers, full of just stickers that I collect. Oh, okay, okay. Like, random ass shit from the tattoo yeah. conventions, from graffiti Wherever. shows, from, like, slaps at Puzu. Yeah. And just a bunch of shit, so yeah, it's like... Man. I was I actually have, like, a bunch uh, in a box put away, too. And I was thinking of maybe having do something with it you know maybe a canvas or something i don't know i also have a gang of business cards like a ridiculous amount of business cards like stacks on stacks of business cards yeah I was thinking of doing something here you know maybe maybe with all the guests in addition with everything i've collected. honestly what i would do in the long run just because you're going to keep expanding look at how many paintings you have up already yeah I got a gang is of to compress compress all that like how this is yeah. like i remember right now that you said the business cards i remember my mom used to have a it was a fo- it was a, a folder like this, small, thin, like a leather bound folder, and it was the size, the width of a business card basically. Mm-hmm. And it was, remember like those those sheep those sheep protectors that we had as kids for like oh, uh, yeah, yeah, for, for the like cards. the cards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, they have I had them for like folders. baseball cards and, uh, yeah. and all my uh, all my uh, basketball cards, but like I have, I have the kids use them for their Pokemon cards. Yeah, and she had all these business cards in there. Yeah. And that should just look legit to look, go through it and look at like old business cards from like the eighties, from the nineties. Yeah, I should so that would do be that. at least two. F- you know the cool thing? I also have artists, the same artist card throughout their years. That. So not all of them, but I have like I have like two or three of orcs okay. from like each time he changed his card. And here's one thing: eventually, it's not gonna be. You know, later on down the line, once you once you start, once it's, you it's accumulate all this cards. stuff, it's a lot of cards. Once you accumulate all this stuff, you're gonna want to get rid of it. So we we you're gonna what you could do with those is like create them in little art pieces for that artist, mm-hmm. or even just frame them. Just yeah. frame like their years Sorry. of different business cards and. Yeah, my lady, she has a, a card from one of her favorite artists framed. It's like one of those little tiny frames. Yeah. Yeah. See, I never different. thought about. It. I always collect the stickers. Yeah, but yeah, yeah cards are good too. Yeah. Like just to have them all, yeah, have the tra- the the. I don't even have my own cards. Like yeah. I fucking give them out as much as I can, and by the time like it comes around, you it comes back around. around like shit. Yeah. I'll find them like in between things here and there. Yeah, but, man, that's fucking dope. What are you working on? I don't know, man. Uh, I looked up. Uh, I think I'm gonna do some mushroom shit. I was looking up some references earlier. Okay. So I'm thinking of doing um, a new uh, a new the fucking the circle for the Instagram and the YouTube. Okay. The, the profile pics. Yeah. I'm thinking of doing a new profile pic of um, so it's gonna be like a like a painting palette with like maybe mushrooms growing out of it. Nice. So maybe like a paint palette with and then the paint turns into like mushrooms and then I was thinking of fucking around and figuring out how to animate. It. So maybe have a little animated intro of like, like you kind of like zooming into the paint palette, mm-hmm. and then it looks kind of like a landscape with the little piles of paint. Yeah. You know, and then as you go closer towards like the paint, uh-huh. mushrooms start growing out of the sides. I don't know how crazy I'm gonna go with it because I don't know how to animate. Yeah. But I was thinking of maybe doing that and having that build like, it up from the, there. The animated intro for the podcast. Ooh, you I know, get what you mean. Like really, like fuck around and make sure it's all nice and clean, you know? Cause there's no go back to like a no fucking hurry. what was that show? What the, the the one with Mr. Rogers. 
Oh, fucking the Mr. Rogers neighborhood. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the neighborhood, right? The neighborhood. Right? The Mr. Rogers, Rogers neighborhood. Um, how they would zoom into the whole thing and yeah. make it look like it was so much, but it was just like a stage prop, basically. Yeah, yeah. Like that's dope. And you know what? Right now that I was showing you the videos from from my studio, mm-hmm. that's basically what I do too. When I go in there, like I'll zoom in. I never show the full picture. Yeah. yeah. Unless it's a full like portrait, like that land- landscape shot. But when I'm like recording that, I try to because there's so much like people. It's always perspective. Like you, you have your stuff around. You never like um, look beyond it. Yeah. But people come in and then they start seeing, oh shit, this is a dope layout. That's a dope layout. That this is dope right here. Yeah. Yeah. Like you I, know what? I did that with uh, that fool, Ricky. Ricky. Uh huh. From uh, Hernandez. Yeah, Ricky Hernandez. Yeah. The tattoo artist or whatever. Uh-huh. Um, I went he because sh- he had a studio like right next to where he was showing the gallery. So I guess. Yeah, yeah. You went out there. Yeah. Yeah. One Pedro? yeah. This was a while ago. Which oh, for go, the show got, that you yeah, had. Yeah, for that show. I got to pick up my paintings, by the way. So, <laughs> anyways, um, so I walk in and I yeah, check Rick out the studio, homie. and he uh, he had his oil paints hanging from clips. Mm-hmm. He had his oil paints hanging from clips off like. On a, strings or what? Yeah, he, I think it was on strings. Or I or think like they were on tacks. just like those little. Yeah, those tacks. tacks. Yeah. And then I was like, oh shit, that shit looks tight. You know, but I was like, man, it's so simple. I never thought about it. Yeah. You know, but now I'm like, oh, I kind of want to do that. You know, maybe have it, like, on one side and then just, like, make sure it's all fucking, all the paints are there. Maybe have them laid out by gradients. And then maybe if I'm missing something, Uh you know, in the gradient sheet, maybe I can, it'll entice me to buy it. That's true. Yeah. Sometimes I forget what fucking colors I have. I'm there standing and I'm like, fuck, do I have this color? Wait, do I have this color? You know, sometimes I forget what colors I have and what colors I don't. What's a... What's been working for me on that on that aspect mm. is at the shop, I have all my inks laid out. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Like, I can visualize them. Like, every tattoo that I do, I have all my inks by and color, and I know. Yeah, no, for Kind of like how this is. Having to look for all that shit, dude. It, it's, it, it's, like, unprofessional. If you're, especially if you're tattooing. Yeah. You know, and then yeah. you're, like, spent half an hour looking for something. Yeah. Because like, even oh. then, like, I have them all laid out there, and I still take forever. Yeah. Like, people want that shit. Like, on the fucking on spot, the fly, huh? you know they they expect you to be ready, and that's not how art works. Like that that's a big issue with like tattooing, is that customers come in and they like they think it's like going to subway. They think yeah. it's like they don't they don't see the art form of it. They just see the the service form of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like you gotta attend me and you gotta attend me now. It's like nah it don't work that way. You gotta wait. <laughs> you gotta wait. Like I tell them straight out, but a lot of a lot of artists have issues of struggle with that with like communicating with them the aspect of it. What it is, what what this career really is. Yeah. Cause I people watch. <laughs> I people watch a lot. Yeah. And then I fucking like I analyze a lot of shit, so I try to try to find the the easiest answer to things. Basically, the most simplest form, the more the most the most practical thing to just simplify everything. Like yeah, yeah. when you're if you're in a certain field, if you're doing a certain thing, you should have your your shit unlocked from your setup to your verbal skills on how to like. You know, someone comes up and asks you about your painting, you should know about it. Yeah. Someone comes up and asks you about your art, you should know about it. Like, yeah. If not, make it up. <laughs> yeah. That's what it is. It's not about being specifically correct. It's not about what... You know, it's about how confident are you in what you're doing. Because you could bullshit the people. You could bullshit the people and just... Like, tell them, oh yeah, this, 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 and, this and that. But they're going to eat it up. And that basically becomes the identity of your artwork. What what you say? Like what you say it is. Yeah. You know, people always kind of have their own interpretation for things. Oh, yeah. But whatever your definition of why you did things. Like there's artists that do stuff and don't know why they do it until they get asked. And then it's not until that that they start putting perspective into it. For real. I don't know. I've been going deep. I think the... The mic, the the microdosing kind of helps out. 
It helps to see just. How long have you been doing that for now, man? It's been on and off. I don't really like. I don't, I don't really have a connect like that, or even like have the consistency on it right now. Mm-hmm. But it's just like whenever I get some, break it down and just take that week trip. But it's something that's always it always lingers within you. Once you know, once you see it that way, it's like it's a lot easier to go there. Okay, okay. You know, it's like muscle memory. Yeah, so when you take this, do you feel like you're actually in, in like... Depending on the dosage. Or, I, I know for sure, you don't hallucinate whatsoever, right? It's just like a... It like depends. A, like a, <laughs> Everyone's oh, different, too. Everyone's <laughs> different, like... With microdosing? Yeah, because my girl... Uh, my girl took like two the other day, and we hadn't we hadn't done them in a while. Mm-hmm. And she took two, and she was like, she hit me up like an hour later. She's like, dude, they're kicking in. And mm-hmm. you're not hallucinating. Everything just feels more vibrant. Okay, okay, but she felt okay. So she like, felt yeah, a you body, feel a body change, a body high, definitely a yeah. mental high. Uh, but then I'll take them and I'll work all day and you know go about my day. I'll forget I. I'll you forget I even took them, and the moment that become like a vitamin time shit. Yeah, that's basically yeah. what it is. It's like just a vitamin. It doesn't really change your body. Yeah, too it, drastically. Yeah, it doesn't. What it does, it allows you to just. It's like a caffeine pill. Like if you took one caffeine pill, like you feel like the best feeling, the best like expression that I've had for it, and that's so. That's when I remember that I I took them. Mm-hmm. Is when you're like halfway through your day and usually you're like stressed out. Usually you're just like rushing. You just like want it to be over or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. But I just catch myself in like this ah moment, like. <sighs> oh okay. So you're you. Mm-hmm. Like just. I get it. I get it. It's not too much, but it's like perfect to snap you out of being negative. Mm, okay. It's pr- it's just enough to be like, thank you. So you have like a grateful feeling? Hell yeah, it gives you a definite feeling of just like appreciation of just like positiveness. It's cool, man. Yeah, I've been um I've been thinking about microdosing, but um I just I, I don't know. Like, There's... I don't know. One, I gotta first I gotta like start it on the weekend just to figure out the dosage to make sure it's not too much. Start. I would say just start off with the least. Yeah. Pick like, one. If you don't feel it, then go. don't feel it. Do this. Cool. Take one, like, to start your day off if, on a day that you don't have nothing to do. Yeah. It's not going to affect you, but just so you're not psyched out, you're not in your head about it. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then go throughout the day. Take it, Take one when you wake up, have, like, your vitamin, mm-hmm. and see how you feel throughout your day. If by, like, noon you don't feel much... Then you know you can up it. Then you can just... I would just... How, how, do you, how do you weigh this out? How do you weigh this out? Do you uh, just have to do a little scale or how you... Ooh, how do I'm you not even weighing them out. What I'm doing is... Uh, You're just grabbing like a small cap or something? I, I'm just, yeah. I'm filling up capsules. I'm, I grind it up in a coffee oh, grinder. Grind oh, okay, okay. Grind it up in a coffee grinder and just um, throw them into capsules. Okay, so and you then, capsule it. Yeah, and then from capsules you just take them one yeah, or two at a time. you just do nothing, just the mushroom then? Or do you add something else? Um, just the mushroom on the pill, but then I'll smoke some weed to kind of like ease it off, or okay, okay. you know, because you don't feel anything. Do you, do you smoke the the whole day while you you have your I, trip? Yeah, I, I, well, I smoke more than anything else, so it's like that's just a day to day thing. Okay. So you smoke like every day? Yeah. That's what's up. <laughs> Basically. Yeah. That's what's up. Do you, I don't. Do not, you not smoke, smoke joints or do you smoke like a? I've been like what I've been doing a lot recently is the uh, the hemp wraps, oh, okay, and I okay. love those because I don't do tobacco like that shit's just too much. I'll yeah, take a hit here and there with the like the blunt, yeah, but in the long run, <clears throat> especially like the way that we work, it's like we're, we're just there sitting all day. We gotta really keep our our bodies good because we're not doing much activity like. Like, our shit is just sitting there, basically. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, it's like we're doing a lot of mental work. So you got to kind of measure it, right? Because you don't want to fucking take too much and then just be yeah. sleepy. Yeah. Let's just be fucking sleepy, right? Well, I've... Yeah, on that part, yeah. Mainly what it is for me, when 
like we have our whole little setup as well too because it's like two or three of us at the shop that'll smoke so we'll okay. take our little we call them safety we call them safety breaks gotta make sure we're safe before we get started <laughs> and um everybody has their own ritual yeah, I've been exactly. to I've been I've been to a lot of tattoo shops. Not like a crazy amount, but I've had friends. Hey, you probably been to more than I have. Who being an artist, a being a tattoo artist, it's hard to go into somebody else's tattoo shop. Yeah, so without like, being invited. Well, yeah, so like my friends had a lot of tattoo shops that they worked at, you know. Mm-hmm. So wherever they went, you know, they had a little ritual, and then like you can tell, like each shop had its own ritual and its own like amount of people that actually smoked and the ones yeah. that were squeaky clean you know because not everybody yeah. at, at a shop not smokes. everyone you know what not everyone needs to not everyone yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's not like a need it's yeah. just like you know the people that are like hey i'm not gonna everyone, take a, a quick a quickie not everyone <laughs> feeds off of it yeah. in the same way like we had one dude for a while actually we still do one of our one of our homies he i don't know where the fuck he gets this stuff from but <laughs> he'll come with a whole box yeah. of just edibles Oh, Gummy worms, shit. chocolate. He probably has like a, a, a bunch of cartridges. Yeah, he has. Yeah. He he does a lot of a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of work for the for different shops, different buddies that he oh, has. Okay, that's perfect. He's got homies. So he, he he'll bring all this shit over, and it's like, fuck, where the fuck you get this from? But he'll sell it to us for dirt cheap. Mm, that's what's up. Like a like, bag of gummy worms that's like twenty to thirty bucks. He'll sell them for five bucks. Dude, I haven't done edibles in forever. When's the last time you did edibles? Right now. Bam. Damn. <laughs> Damn. You fucking crazy, man. It just gets me through the day. Honestly, uh, with me, you, it's so my wait, attention. Those are the gummy bears, right? No, these are. This is a crisp. This is a rice krispie. This oh, is like I'm from the dispensary. Oh, so you, but you always get the rice krispie? Or? Nah, I get whatever. Honestly, like I, I don't. I'm not big on edibles. The only time I like do edibles is if I'm gonna be somewhere for like a long period of time where like yeah. I don't take my. Yeah, that's why I was like, God dang, you, you, you. Some people are really high functioning with edibles. I'm yet to meet one, but <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I, that's you, man. I'm, I'm iffy. Fast, I'm, I'm, I'm iffy with edibles, honestly. Yeah. Like I'll eat them. Like I said, if it's. If it's something that I know I'm going to be doing something for a long period of time. Like, if I eat an edible any time past, like, six, and I'm not doing shit. You'll go to sleep. Not necessarily go to sleep. I won't feel it until I go to sleep. Oh. So, which means that I'll wake up stoned. Stoned. Ah. Stoned, like, not even wanting to get out of bed. Stoned. Yeah, I've done that. And I hate that shit. So, if I do them, like, it'll be around this time. And that's just because I'm going to be... Or when we're out and about. Like, Disneyland? Okay. You can be high in here. Hell not yeah. Go, you're not going to go to sleep. <laughs> Hell yeah, I'm doing edibles at Disneyland. Yeah, it's more enjoyable, no? And you don't have to spend a gang of money on fucking beer and shit, right? I, you know what? Like, you can just... I was just... Cool. That was another reason why I was, like... Like, lagging today. Mm-hmm. Me and my girl went out to eat last night, mm-hmm. and... Um, I had one fucking beer. And recently, I just haven't... Is that a even... fucking coyote right there? Nah, it's a dog. Huh. Psh. Get out of here, dog. I don't know you. <laughs> uh, it's our neighbor's dog. But I thought it was a coyote. Yes, right? The other day, my lady saw a coyote up the street. Sure. Probably they were out there. No! Get out of here. But, um... Yeah, we went out and I had a beer. We each had a beer and... I don't feel the same anymore yeah. about about alcohol. Like I used it to drink. fucked you up a little more, huh? It's not even that it fucked me up. It's just I was over it when I drank it, and I, I just felt it this morning. Uh, Plus, I've been like detoxing and. Oh okay. okay. I've been on a whole, like. My body is a temple shit. <laughs> it's basically <laughs> right? trying to get there. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not like in no rush to get there. I'll get there when I get there. Yeah. Well, you're um, just taking it a little easier, no? I'm just focusing more on it. Now I'm mentally prepared for it. Yeah. I forgot where the fuck I heard it from, but I think it might have been uh, Napoleon Hill, like, on one of his books. Mm-hmm. He said that a clean mind does not desire a dirty diet. Oh, okay, okay. So for me, it was always about, like, you know, everybody tries, oh, I'm going to go clean, I'm going to start doing this, I'm going to start working out, I'm going to start fucking hitting the gym, I'm not going to eat this, I'm not going to eat that. And 
the more with me the more i tell myself that the more i indulge in it because i'm kind of like my own worst fucking enemy and shit like i indu- i i whatever i tell myself i shouldn't do then you, you'll hear me later on fuck it like yeah <laughs> you know convincing myself to fucking do it yeah I've been there. You know, so it's like, okay, it's not the action of doing it. It's the mental stability of being in that higher resonation of it. Yeah. Being a bigger... Being more aware of what it is that you're really doing. So now I'm trying to become more aware of what it is that I intake. Yeah, because that's the only way you're going to be able to, like... And just... Just be a little healthier because if you're not I mean the reason people are unhealthy is because they don't they're not conscious of what it, yeah, they, what they, you don't fuel s- mean they want to put the high octane fucking gas in their car but they don't want to put no high anything in their own system yeah, yeah. it's like yeah. and it's small steps honestly it's very yeah, small and it's steps not, it's not easy you know? it's, it doesn't happen overnight it definitely our temple is we have to build it you know uh, we didn't get this way overnight we can't un- you know, we can't undo what we've done for years. I'm like, I'm really conscious of what I put in my body. Uh huh. Just in the in the sense that I know exactly going in that this shit is not fucking good for me. Exactly. I know that every fucking exactly. single time, every time I'm eating it, I'm like, fuck, this is not good for me. And then I'm always like, eh, all right. It's just powering through. But you know what? It's <laughs> gonna know? get to the point where if you keep telling yourself that, yeah, your body really, is gonna, your your mind's gonna trigger your body, and your body's gonna reject that. Eventually. So what's gonna what's gonna happen is that you're just gonna become gross of it. Yeah, eventually. Like, I, I I hope so. Like that's how I, I that's how I feel about alcohol right now. Uh, yeah. You know, it's like okay, I'll drink it because I know it's like I want to just mellow out and I want to have a good time and mm-hmm. this and that. But then I drink it. And it doesn't taste the same. Uh-huh. It doesn't go down the same. Okay. My it's stomach turns little... right away. Yeah. And it's not necessarily the alcohol. Well, it's obviously the alcohol, but I'm saying, like, like not necessarily, like, I don't want to get drunk or I want to be fucking sober or this and that. Yeah. It's just, like, I just don't react to it the same way anymore. Why? Because my mind is telling my body, like, you already know this shit ain't good for you, so. And it's not fun for you anymore, right? Yeah. It's... Now I enjoy, like... Look at this. You'll see me walking around with this everywhere. Oh, gang of water and shit. Fuck yeah. yeah man. Like, I never enjoyed drinking fucking water so much as I do now. Yeah, man. I believe that. I found out... Well, I didn't find out, but I didn't start to have, like, that conscious view on things. And I'm totally not healthy. I'm not saying I'm anywhere near, am any, anywhere near a fucking fit person. And I'm and fucking not because I know the shit I've been eating, you know? But, uh, the one time I actually fucking, like, figured out, like, hey, maybe, maybe the shit you eat, like, it's, it's, it's got something to do with, like, with the way you're, you not, function. you're not being, you're not being healthy. Mm-hmm. The one, that first time that shit ever came to my mind was when I was fucking, when I did mushrooms. When I did Dingo. mushrooms, the mush, after I did the mush, or, yeah, after I did the mushrooms, I was like... Why couldn't, why couldn't I, because I kind of felt like I left my body. So yeah. after like I, after the mushrooms were over or whatever, I was like, man, it, I was having a really hard time like leaving, you know? Yeah. Like I was struggling to leave. And I was like, I, I, think it was, I think it's because like I had been eating unhealthy up until that point, like mm-hmm. really unhealthy, you know? And I was like, I think it's because my body wasn't healthy enough for me to leave longer, you know? That's that the one time. That's the one time where I'm like, oh shit. So this is how people like can't have like you know experiences out of their body yeah. because your body they're not, not ready for their your body. Your body's not healthy. You know, if you leave for too long, your body's gonna fucking it's gonna, Here's die. What it's gonna die. You're not gonna be able to come back. Type of shit. You know. And it was weird. I'm sure I'm fucking tripping, but. Like that's what, after that I'm like so much so much more conscious about like the shit what that's going to yeah. yeah. Even though like we still consume it because we're in a fucking consumption land. I, I we're mean, in I the land of consuming. I'm still a fucking a subject to fucking shit that's easy, you know. But then, like, the more we're conscious of it, the more our bodies just the more our brain is gonna talk to our body and just slowly start rejecting it. Yeah. What's been going on with me like the last 
since the month started actually me and my girl have been on like a a detox and cleansing kind of stage where we're not necessarily cutting anything out of our diet mm -hmm. we're just replacing certain meals throughout our day slowly oh, okay, like okay. in the morning instead of drinking freaking a coffee or anything like that it's we have these detox drinks and they're energy booster drinks and they're fucking bomb they're bomb oh, okay so you're just substituting yeah and, and then like throughout the day we'll have we'll, we've been making these uh meal replacement shakes Oh, okay. So we'll, we'll... Technically, you're supposed to, like, drink one to get your day started. We just make a big one and just kind of drink it throughout the day. Mm, okay, okay. And then we've been meal prepping as well. So that's just... What we're doing is just kind of eliminating the excuse to... Get some bad tea and shit? Yeah. yeah. So you start eliminating all that. Like, now... I work at the fucking shop, dog. There's nothing but dudes in there. Everyone's fucking eating out every fucking day. For sure. And every day is like, oh, what are we going to eat today? Oh, I'm going here, I'm going there. You know, the typical fast food restaurants. Mm -hmm. Typical fatty food. Yeah, man. Especially at the shop. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, now I'm, I'm literally two minutes away from the, from my pad. Oh, okay. At the shop. Oh, yeah, you you moved? Or, no, you didn't move. Right? No, I've been, the, I've been there. Oh, okay. So, the, you're just not eating out. Yeah, I just came back. Well, actually, I, I came back to that shop a year a year ago in July. It's gonna oh, be okay, a year. That okay. I'm back at that shop. Before I was jumping around at other locations, so I was further away from home. Ah, so it made it harder to like to be able to go home and to prepare to food to really like carry it around and like have it ready and shit like that. Yeah. So now that I'm close to home, plus my girl is there all the time, so it's like. Phew, if I don't if I if I don't take food in the morning, she'll drop something off around around noon or one, you know. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Before yeah. the day starts, so now that we've been, in, it's been, it's like I said, it's been small steps. One of the, like I said, one of the first small steps that I fucking took is just consuming that's more the water. That's probably step, dude. Water is like yeah. so essential to it. And it's sauce. specific water too. Like I only get the alkaline water. Oh, okay, okay. Because it it makes a big difference. You take that and like you savor that motherfucker. Yeah. You, you, you drink regular fucking, like, purified water or any of these, like, company water shit, uh -huh. bottled water. Bottled water. You drink a whole bottle and you're still thirsty. Yeah. And then it just leaves, like, a residue fucking taste in your mouth. Mm-hmm. So you definitely feel the difference. With, oh, yeah. With, with the water. Yeah. The type of water you, you drink. That's part of a... That's, you know, everyone's talking about Nipsey right now. Mm -hmm. Like... How Topoli got killed because of the Dr. CB um, documentary that he was going to bring out and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Dr. CB is a big influence on all that. Like, he's the one that... He's the first person that I heard talking about, like, alkaline. How we got to balance our alkaline in our system. How batteries run off of alkaline. How mm -hmm. we were basically... Our human body is, is a, it's a battery for our energy. It's a, we're the host. So, um... He's a big proprietor of alkaline intake and stuff. Yeah, and it's alkaline foods, alkaline uh, drinks, and just a lifestyle. You know, how to remove ourselves from the negative energy. From I mean, know. it makes sense, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. Uh, but it's but, crazy, uh, like... For example, uh, I mean, we can we can pause a little bit, you know, but I don't know. It sounds like a domestic. <laughs> so, like it. It, it ain't stopping me. It ain't distracting me. Yeah. But yeah, like that's crazy, man. That so you, you you've been doing like a lot of studying, then, like on like just um, kind of like trying to change your lifestyle. I know an in I I know introductions to a lot of conversations. Mm -hmm. Put it that way. And then that kind of intrigues me into more. Like, mm -hmm. I've gone to the most randomest of places and be able to carry conversations with the most randomest of people just because of the different topic headliners. I'm a, we're in a generation of headline reading. Yeah. Nobody goes into the fine print. Mm -hmm. Everyone just reads headlines. So, same thing with me. Like, I'm just look look into the headlines that interest me. And then if they interest me a little bit more, then I'll go deeper into them. Okay. So you, you like to think you um, you have a wide variety of topics you you're you're able to carry conversations about. 
or intrigued about at least like I might not like I might not know shit about it but I know the subject's there and I'm not ignorant to it you know they might relate it to other stuff that I might know about as well so it just kind of goes hand in hand so so do you take conversations and like let's say let's say there's a topic Uh you want to talk about and we discuss it normally do you take that topic whatever we talked about the topic and say something I said that you didn't think of before do you take that and work it into the next time you bring up that topic oh yeah it's definitely like everything that I know is just from other people we're just regurgitating information Okay, so, so, you, so you're kind of like trying to widen your knowledge of that topic based exactly. by, by like that's asking how I learned, people. That's how I learned by things. By asking people. Like a bunch you know, of things. If you don't know, and, ask. Yeah. Those close mouths don't get fed. It's cool, man. Um, and so, your hustle, too. You know, I've, <laughs> ear hustle? I'm an only child, so I grew yeah. up with a lot of like old people, and I would just ear hustle, ear hustle, ear hustle. Just like sit there... Act like I don't fucking care, but ear hustle everything. Yeah. Like, like at the shop that I'm at, I'm, my station's up front, mm. so I could hear. It's it's a good perspective to where even if you're in the back, like the owner has his, his station in the back, mm-hmm. you can still hear the whole everything that's going on. So you're able to connect with things better. You're able to. You're not out. You're not out of the loop. And, you know how to react to things. You're you're pretty much on on your toes for for stuff. Oh, okay, okay, okay. You know, it's yeah, like yeah. If, if if a conversation's getting like you know you have to getting listen. heated up. Yeah. yeah, you have to be aware. Yeah, okay. be aware of your surroundings. So I would always do that. It's just like with all the older people, just ear hustle and just figure out what the hell they were talking about. Just pay attention. Huh? Hell yeah. So are you working on anything currently? Like any uh shows or um, anything coming up? I'm doing La Bulla. Okay, what, what is that? That's a, a Lucha Libre theme art show oh, hosted cool, 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 by cool. Uh, Antonio Pelayo. Oh, sick. It's right here at the Plaza de la Raza. When is that? June 22nd. June 22nd. Yeah, time that's time. the, I think this is their fifth, yeah, it's their fifth one, I think. Is that a, is that a, like a, a free show or it's like paid? No, or? it's a 21 and over show and over. Um, okay. I don't know what the tickets are. Oh, okay, okay. But uh, it's pretty dope. That's they nice. they have like they have a concert. They have uh, they have lucha libre matches. Ooh, that's what's up. People are like they have actual wrestlers there. And what city is this in? Uh, it's right there at Lincoln Park. Lincoln Park. Oh, okay, okay. I don't know what's at what, like Lincoln Heights, Boyle Heights. Um, Boyle Heights, maybe. Somewhere in East Los. I'm, I'm, like, I'm from really the harbor, bad. dog. Like. I, <laughs> Okay, okay. That sounds like cool. Like a cool fucking... Yeah, like a cool the, show, this is the fifth one that he throws. And the, the, the cool thing about it is that all the panels, the the, the, um, the panels for the canvas, the canvas basically, mm-hmm. are in the shape of a luchador. Like oh, the mask. Right, like a mask. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How's that going? I, I saw you were written yeah, on that. Yeah, it's going. I got to get on it. <laughs> the deadline's the 15th. So... today? Uh, the 19th. Right. Of June. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, you got time. Yeah, I got time, but it's oil, so I gotta like. You better get on it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we get on this shit quick. Cause I, it's funny because it took me. Color. It only took me like a day. Are or... you using medium with your oil to make it dry quick? Yeah. Oh, okay. Then you'll be fine. Yeah, I'm using that, and then I, I don't really like use my oils too too wet. Oh, okay. I I like them dry, just so I I use the dry brush effect a lot. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. But it's like I don't really paint with oils a lot so I'm just like it's a lot of trial and error trial and error yeah. just kind of build up build up build up cause I was gonna do it with markers or with pencils even acrylic but it's on a it's on a wood canvas okay. and I just didn't want to deal with the layers of acrylic and not having a blend and having it look like very childish very like, like matte yeah very matte finish that and then just not being able to get the layers on there, right? Yeah. Okay. So, so you're doing my... it with oils. Yeah. So I would have gone with oils too. Yeah. Um, I've only done a couple of wood panels, 
and I'm not a big fan of wood. Yeah. I'm not a fan at all. Like with oils, it kind of absorbs the it wood does. absorbs the paint a little bit. Yeah, like what I did uh eventually you'll get over it. I did so. throw yeah, I did throw a good a good layer of yeso on there. Oh, you should be fine then. Yeah. yeah. Cuz when I made good. it it was just I yeah, know, no, it's like, been oh. it's been a good process. It's just kind of getting those blends in that I want. Yeah. Like going into those like thinner brushes. Are you going to varnish it? Yeah, if I have I, time, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be one of those. If you have time, yeah, for sure. But it's going to be not, one of those things. Because if you have it hanging, that varnish is just going to. Yeah, exactly. What so happened to that one? Yeah. It got tilted before it fucking f- dried fully, and then like in the middle, it's like. Yeah, so. <laughs> I don't know. I would have to finish at least four or five days before the deadline. Yeah. To be able to dry it somehow. What's I a good think, way to dry uh, it? Um, I don't know. I think honestly, you should get a varnish. Like that something dries to... quick. Okay. It's, it's, it's like a specific one for oil, and it dry. It's like fast dry varnish or whatever. So you should probably start with that, and then I I I want to try it because. I don't like the slow dry. It takes way too long, man, and it's too much. Of a, yeah. Too many chances for dust to get out. I want it to dry quick. I want it to be the less dust that can be on there, the better. That. You know, because yeah. I'm. A, that's what I've been waiting to varnish that one. Yeah. Yeah. Because I don't want to varnish it yeah. lay down and then just have a layer of fucking dust on it. You gotta. Yeah. Especially yeah. around here, so I was like, "Fuck it, I need that fast dry shit." So I'm gonna try that. You, you know. gotta varnish that thing in like a, one of those paint rooms where they yeah, paint cars. Yeah, something, you know. But um, yeah, I've been kind of holding off to varnish that one. I feel you, sure. Yeah, <sighs> I, okay. yeah I have that coming up. The show is June twenty second, and then from there, I have uh, the. LA Tattoo Convention. Oh, sick. You're working that one? Yeah, that okay. one's in um, August. Have you done that one before? Is this the first time? I, we did it last year. The shop's done it all three years. This is the third year, I think. Oh, okay. How do uh, how do those work out? They're pretty good. They're good? They're really good. Yeah. Well, it depends. LA's kind of like saturated for stuff like that. So yeah. there's amazing ones throughout the world, but the one, this one that just, that's coming up is pretty good for like the aspect of it because you go to like east coast conventions and they're huge they're fucking they're something that people wait for all fucking year oh okay okay. because they're like in philly they're in new york they're in uh boston they're in places where you know people wait for this stuff people from like states over drive out to this Mm -hmm. to get tatted out here like you could drive you drive down any major street and see a tattoo shop Mm mm-hmm it's not like that on the East Coast. And then the ones that there are aren't really that that experience or that great. Some There's some dope-ass ones. Do you go to any East Coast? I'm planning to. That's definitely the next step. Oh, uh, okay, okay. That's definitely the next step. Yeah, I think my, my friend goes to the Philly one. I don't know which Philly one. Philly one's right amazing. Philly one. yeah. But he always goes every year, every fucking year. Which is good, you know, and I think he's got a little clientele over there. Like people you do, like, you build up clientele, especially yeah. like when like you're in an area where, people, you know, that appreciate them flying out. Yeah. To, you know. And here's the thing that if you go anywhere outside of L.A. and people find out that you're an L.A. artist, you automatically have have that much of a advantage towards somebody that's. Oh, OK, not. so people tend to like give it. Uh, L.A. is the mecca for tattooing right now. Okay, okay. So just from the fact that, oh, we come from L.A., oh, you guys must be dope. You guys are sick. It's got like a... We have a higher stigma, competition. A stigma right? on it or something? Yeah, it has a positive stigma, at least throughout yeah. the tattoo culture, especially for the black and gray. Because this is like the home of black and gray tattooing right here. Oh, okay, okay. That's how... It's, um... I'm still tripping out on that dog. It keeps coming back or what? No, no, it left, but it was it was trippy. That's cool, man. I mean, it's it's good to know that, you know, at least outside of the state, some people, like, you know, don't just n- look negatively. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, you go down south, and they probably do, but... <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm sure every, everywhere, everything. you know, but at least it's not, like... At least there's something positive coming Yeah, out, right? people follow it. 
Like there's some uh, some of the it depends too where these conventions are. Like there's conventions that are close to to military uh, bases and bases, shit. and um, all those motherfuckers will be going and get tatted. Yeah, right. Uh, That's cool. And then like I don't know. At least for me, when I go anything outside of home, you kind of push more to put yourself out there. Yeah, yeah. For like, sure, for sure. I went to Portland. Damn, it's probably like two years ago now. Probably more. I went to Portland and ended up doing a convention out there. Didn't even, wasn't even planning to. I was just going to go visit and one of my buddies has a shop out there. So I was going to do a guest spot at their shop. Mm-hmm. But ends up that that weekend that we were going to be there, they were going to be at the convention. So that I just come with us. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So I'm like, cool. Ended up make, ended up tattooing there. Ended up tattooing back at their shop. I was there for like four or five days. I tattooed almost every single day. Oh, hell yeah, man. Yeah. Then it worked out good, man. Hell yeah. But it was just like, I, I, pulled my, I pulled my strings. I had a buddy that I met down here from a seminar that I took. Mm-hmm. Who's, who was from Portland. So I hit him up. I had... The art, the but uh, the the artist whose shop I was guest buying at, I had met them down here at a convention in Pasadena. So I pulled those strings, and then one of my buddies that I tattoo out here, he mm-hmm. has friends that moved out there, and he happened to be out there that same, at that same time. So oh, he sweet. came by, and then I ended up fishing people from the convention. Oh, that's tight, man. So. Necessity when you when you have necessity you can fucking figure out a way to fucking do things. Yeah. Yeah, and like people aren't opposed to help people out, you know? Exactly. Like if you're not asking like a fucking ridiculous thing or anything, like even like, hey, just maybe you can point me in the right direction. Yeah, you just gotta go for there, you know? Like I can go a long way. Uh, yeah, like I said, I went out there. It was funny because it was like a serendipity kind of fucking situation. I didn't get my ticket to fly out there to the same day that we flew out there. Mm-hmm. I had a buddy that was guest spotting down here. He, he lives in Norway, but he was he had came out to the States, so he was in L.A. for about a month. And then he was flying out to uh, Portland. So he's like, come with me. I'm like, fuck it. That same day that he was taking off, I got my ticket. Ended up that I got my ticket wrong. Oh, no. I booked it. It was for, like, the 5th. But since I was such in a rush of booking it, I booked it for the right time, the right day of the week. <laughs> but it wasn't. It was the wrong date. Oh. I thought I was booking it for the 5th. It ended up being for the 25th. Oh, shit. And I didn't see it. I just seen the fifth and just kept running with it. Damn. So I get I get to the I get to the airport and I'm trying to check in and it says, "Oh, your flight's not ready yet." I'm like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. So I go to one of the the assistants right there. I'm like, yeah, you have your thing for the for the twenty fifth. Like, oh shit. shit! So I call in right away and, and fix it. And they're like, oh yeah, we could we could get you on the next plane now. There's still space. It's only gonna be a forty dollar difference. I'm like, that's not bad at all. Let's do this shit. Got on the plane, took off. That was Thursday. We got there Thursday night. So Friday. Friday we were at the convention, mm-hmm. and I'm walking around. I'm thinking, wait, I I switched my my flight in. Not my flight home. Oh shit! So I call in right there, and they're like, "Oh yeah, we can switch it." That one's gonna cost you. That one ended up being like an extra two hundred and fifty bucks Fuck. that I didn't even have in my account because I went out there with like, I went out there to make money. Mm-hmm. I didn't go out there to fucking spend money. I had enough to just to like hang out and probably make make enough to be there and come back. Yeah. And now I had to make an extra like two hundred and fifty bucks. Fuck. Oh bad. So how did how did it end up going? 
so that was to change it to like coming back that Sunday. Mm-hmm. So it was gonna be like an extra two fifty. So I ended up coming back the following Tuesday, which was just two days after. Okay. And it only cost me like fifty bucks more. Oh shit! Okay. So, so I ended up doing that, which actually helped me out because the last two days I was there, I made more money. Oh, okay, perfect. But it was just like, fuck. Because my idea was to go back. We left Thursday. We were going to be there Friday, Saturday. Mm-hmm. And I was going to fly back Sunday okay. to be back at work on Monday. Mm. Back at the shop. Yeah. And that didn't happen. So I ended up going to the, ended up going back to the convention on Sunday. Ended up um, tattooing somebody else there, and then I ended up staying at the shop on Monday, where I ended up, where I ended up doing. Oh, homeboy dropped me off at the airport. I was tattooing to the point that I think my I had I had the like the first flight mm-hmm. at like five six in the morning in the morning so I tattooed to like one or two in the morning and then homeboy just took me straight to the airport Shit. and I just checked in and I just grabbed a quick nap right there till they started boarding but that was cool I need to do more shit like that yeah I mean you got money <laughs> you know yeah and like you utilize the entire time so like you know at the end of it, yeah. you kind of you you kind of have like a little sense of fulfillment, you know? Like you're like fuck yeah, definitely like, yeah. fucking exhausted, but like I did everything I needed to do, yeah. or I, that was and like, then be- offered or the opportunity was there and you took it. Hell yeah, definitely. You know? Need to do more of that, yeah. and it pushes you. Yeah, for sure. Shit like that does push you. Those uh, those crazy jobs like that, like they get you. I'm sure you had like adrenaline going, right? Oh yeah, the whole fucking time. You know, the whole fuck, time, I'm like, fuck. At this time, and blah blah blah. Like I, I, I gotta Everything. fucking go to the airport, but I gotta make sure this is you know good. That's time crazy. budget. Yeah, man. That's a big thing in tattooing. The. The time, time management. management. Yeah. Yeah, man. Or how are you going to make any appointments? You got to figure out. Yeah, that too. Like, that's been hard. Mm-hmm. Like, right now, I booked probably, like, two, three weeks out. Oh, really? So, there's time that, like, different people hit me up through different formats. Either they come into a shop, over the phone, or through social media. So when it's people that I've already worked on, they hit me up like, oh, can you book me in to finish this off or I need a touch up or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yeah. But then I'll get sidetracked and forget to put them on my calendar and then someone walks in and wants uh, to set up an appointment. And with those, it's, it's on paper because they come in, they drop a deposit, we fill out the form and everything. Mm-hmm. So that's on paper, so that's there. But then I completely forgot about the touch up, the touch up, or that the homie that hit me up. Like I canceled on so many friends, so many times because of that shit. Yeah, man. But like, you're not gonna get money hanging out with the homies. Yeah. You know? Well, you know, even 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 the ones that do pay. Like I have a homegirl that's been trying to get her. Um, I've been working on her forearm. She's trying to get it done before August. Mm-hmm. I think August or September. She's getting married. Oh, oh, okay, okay. And I think I canceled on her twice already. Because I completely forget to book her. Book her, yeah, shit. Because she'll hit me up like, oh yeah, next Tuesday. Alright, cool. And then I forget. Fuck. I forget to, like, if I don't put it in my calendar right there and then. It's, you're gonna forget. I'm gonna forget, and then here's what happens. Customers, uh, somebody else comes in and wants to book an appointment, and I look at my calendar, and that's like an open slot. Mm. And I'm like, okay, well, I got this day open. Not knowing that, I I still do that shit. Like right now, I I just did that with this week coming up. This lady, she had booked an appointment already, 
we set the day and then she messaged me like oh can we change the schedule because i'm gonna be working that day I'm like, all right well i got this day open perfect i go to my local weed shop the <laughs> next day and i'm talking to the security guard there he's like hey we're still on for wednesday because i've been tattooing him i'm like yeah i look at my calendar i'm like oh shit so i hit up that lady because she had changed it up on me so then that's usually how i work how i work around it like if i fuck up i fuck up i'll work my schedule around you but if you like reschedule on me first then i have no problem in like rescheduling yeah yeah Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense it's just like uh it's already it's it's already up in the air yeah yeah because you don't know what if she has to reschedule again yeah exactly so i'm like this one's for sure. I fucked up. Let me move you because you fucked up on me. And all's fair that ends well. Yeah. Makes sense, man. Everyone's getting... Everyone gets tatted. You get tatted. <laughs> A little Oprah moment. Right. But yeah, it's been good. I can't complain. I've been staying busy. And this year's mm-hmm. been... It's been good. It's been a good stepping song. It's been yeah. a definitely a good stepping song. When was I here? In January, I think? Yeah, I think it was that like was the January, February, somewhere around there. So, yeah, yeah it's been a... Glad to hear that, man. I'm glad to hear, like, oh, yeah. you know, we're already kind of halfway through the year. Exactly. You and, know, like, this year, this, about. this is the first year that I've been more conscious of my time frame and what... Where you're at in the year. Goal-orientated and yeah. where I'm at in the year. And yeah, I've been you. keeping track. This is the first year that I keep track of all my tattoos and that, all my income that comes in. And that's just on one aspect, because I want to lock down everything. I want to make sure all my I's are dotted and all my T's are crossed. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the only way people can get anywhere. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's creating that. I just stumbled upon... Well, I didn't stumble upon it. I'm pretty sure a lot of people came came across this book through the same purpose, through the same guide of... Um, it's a book called The Way of the Superior Man. Mm-hmm. By? Oh, I can't remember homeboy's name. Is it David Dean or something like that? David Dean. Okay. What is what is the book about? It, 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 stru- it, it focuses on male and female energies. Okay. And how we're supposed to step up to the plate and what, we, what we're supposed to do to become that superior man, like to become that higher being of ourselves. Mm-hmm. But it's funny because a lot of people, it's, it's a book that's probably selling out right now because it was a book that Nipsey was reading. Oh, okay, okay. That his girl, Lauren London, had actually re, re, uh, recommended to him. So she had him reading it, and it's just fucking intense. Talks about, like, the male, like, how... It, it's basically orientated towards men, but it covers both aspects like what roles we should play as men as like a positive energy and how we could balance it talks about everything being balanced like in the work area how to how to be with your woman how to be with your work and how to be in your like sexual life basically Mm -hmm. and not sexual as like just intercourse but like the play of the role play of male and female energy Mm. Like have it be in our paintings, have it be in our jobs, have it be in our life, have it be in our relationships. Just knowing like the balance of of what and en- what role you play and what energies are required in that in that situation and in that mm. point of life and how to step up to them like it's fucking deep. So is it is it laid out? by examples like does it give examples or these are just like it does it, it kind of breaks it down as like, like like how did it come about these the way that how they does he explain the way knowledge? yeah the way that they get into it is like they kind of break down the mel- how the role play has been within the american life like so it's based on the study of american life or it's based mm, on his like personal yeah it's, experience it's, it's all or? opinions it's all opinionated it's nothing factual oh okay so it's, it's but it's just something. it's something that you that either you relate with or you don't 
You know, it's just... Who, who, the author, is he just an author or how... I haven't really looked into who he is. Who he is, oh, okay. I've been, like, I haven't even been reading the book. What I've been doing is just listening to the, the, the audio book. Oh, okay. Because yeah. I'm at work, so I just have it in my headphones, and yeah. it's the same thing, honestly. That's the way to do it. Because like, this first, way you can do other shit. Yeah, one of the first things that he gets into is how, yeah. like, for example, in the 50s, the the Melro was a really strong Melro. He was the head of the household. He was the one to bring in the money, and the wife was the female role was more of the nurturer. She was the one to be at home and just you know cook, clean, and look pretty kind of kind of mentality, which was in the eighties, in the fifties, in the fifties, okay. in the fifties, and how like once once we started getting into the sixties, that people <coughs> our our mindset started growing, our evolution we started evolution. We started evolving. It went to uh, to more of a balance to where where women started coming into the workforce. Women started having more opinions. Mm-hmm. More more outspoken. More outspoken. Men were being more more feminine. More letting their hair grow. They mm-hmm. were wearing you know looser clothes. They were showing their emotions more. Mm-hmm. The hippie era. Yeah. And then it evolved into, and then it went past that balance. Yeah. It went past that balance where men, where, where men, you know, the whole drag era, the whole, mm-hmm. out, out, out of that. And he talks about how it's just finding our balance within everything. How women became more, more stronger. They were, they were more opinionated. They were in bigger, uh, higher forms of, of stature. Mm-hmm. So it just he talks about how like having that balance with your partner, and having that balance with your, not necessarily just your sexual partner, but having that balance in a room. Mm-hmm. Having that balance in your relationship and your lifestyle and your, and everything that you want to do. Between. Between both. Uh, between yeah, like between male, male and female, female energies. energies. Yeah, like. We, we each have that within ourselves and knowing how to like, yeah, like how to indulge into it and how to use that positively. Like there's gonna be, there's times that, like say how certain females start getting more of a, start becoming more of a male energy driven and how men like fall, fall out, out of attraction of that. Mm-hmm. And they talk about how like naturally, we're sexually gonna we're naturally gonna be sexually attracted to to women. Mm-hmm. They all bring something out. It's all like just different different attractions, different flavors, and everything. But it's up to us as men to know how to evaluate the situation and know how to transfer that energy into something. Yeah. So if this person makes you feel a certain way, have it be male or female. Mm-hmm. What is it that you're going to take from that? Is that going to be your business partner? Is that going to be a customer? Is that going to be your mentor? Mm-hmm. You know, but we're in a society that feeds us, oh, if you feel something, then it's sexual mm-hmm. right away. Or it's a relationship thing right away. And it's like, no, it's just a play. It's a dance on. It's a dance of, of energies. Mm-hmm. We're all here to exchange these energies. Some people have more male energy. Some people have more female energy, and you have to find your balance. Yeah, that sounds like an interesting uh, book. Yeah, it's pretty dope. Yeah, I mean, it goes deeper. Like I've only got into I think the fifth chapter. Oh, okay, that's okay. like ten chapters, probably more. Oh, that's cool, man. Cause I'm the type that like once it starts getting too repetitive. The book. Yeah. Yeah. So then I'm like, okay, let me let me step away from this, and I'll come back to a fresh mind. Yeah, and and, and I mean, the good books are gonna make you come back. So it's not even a, yeah. you know, the good yeah. books are gonna fucking make yeah. you come back. Cause once if, if it's hard for you to retain, like attention to a, a, a fucking a book, a subject, whatever, uh-huh. and you're not gonna. If come you back. step away from it and you don't come back, then, then yeah, that, well, you, then you weren't paying. It like, wasn't, it wasn't interesting. Yeah. You know, don't force yourself for it to be interesting. It just has to be fucking interesting to you. You know, it, you'll come back. If it's interesting enough, you'll, you'll fucking come back. Yeah, yeah. You know? So, 
it's yeah, just it's a evolution good way to test of that. It. It's a yeah. good way to test it. If, if you fucking, if you step away from it and all you're thinking is about it, then you, you just go, go back because you're interested. Yeah. And so, what I do too, I like, I, when I pull back away from it, I kind of, I'll start over. I'll start over from like the beginning. Mm-hmm. I go, I think I'm up to chapter five right now. And I started over like at least two two okay. times already, two three times, and just recap on certain things. Yeah. And it's not like I'm specifically paying attention to that. Sometimes I have it in my ear, and I have music on the other side because I gotta be paying attention, or I gotta I'm tattooing, so I'm listening to my customer. And yeah. I'm multitasking, but all that stuff's getting stuck in the back of my head. Subconsciously, I'm just absorbing all that. Yeah. Yeah, I listen. I listen to shit all day at work. I have periods, dude. Like at, at work, like sometimes I'll like I have a period. Like in the morning, I'll listen to one or two podcasts, right. and then I'll listen to music for a couple of hours, and then I'll go back to, oh, and then I'll listen to a couple of comedy. You know, oh yeah, I'll go the, a couple of comedy playlist, and I'll just listen to that shit, laugh a little bit, and then I'll go back to a podcast or two, and then you know I'll shift around like what I'm listening to throughout the fucking day. Yeah. You know, because I can't just do nothing but fucking. You can't, yeah, you can't. You I can't can do nothing but music. You, you know? can't. I, I like you constantly, do. and then I get fucking, I get irritated if I don't have anything. Like if I'm stuck between one or the other, and like, oh, fuck, I can't find shit to to either listen to, to listen or whatever. To. I get frustrated. I'm like, fuck. Yeah, I don't it's funny. Know why, like, dude, it's fucking weird. I get frustrated. Me and my girl differ in that a lot. Like with her, she could put on the same show that she's watched like fifty <laughs> times. Fifty times, yeah. And have that while she's getting ready or while, like, she's doing dishes or while she's, uh, just... Whatever, chilling. You know, working at the pad. Yeah. So, um, I can't do that. I walk in and she's playing, like, same I Love Lucy, that, the same thing from, like, 50 years ago. I'm like, fuck, okay, it's funny. And this, and this stuff that I haven't even watched, she's probably watched it. I haven't even watched it. I'm already kind of, like, over it. If it's stuff that I, like, I could anticipate what's going to happen... Yeah. Then I kind of like get over it. Yeah, man. See, but that like, that's her. That's her music. That's, that's her, her way of, of working with yeah, things. That's, yeah, that's, that's her way. You know. And like, I'll get I'll get on her and she'll get on me. But um, uh, yeah, like I'll tell her like, put on something educational and then we'll put something on. But then, like, I'll get over shit. Like I'm the one trying to push the education the most of like learning. Just, uh-huh. just like tapping into things. Like I said, I'm a headline reader. Uh-huh. So like fifteen minutes into whatever it is, I'm kind of if I'm if it doesn't grab me, yep. I'm over it and I'm on something else. But at least like I know the introduction of it, I know yeah. the intro of it, I know there's I know that this conversation is, exists, this subject exists. Mm-hmm. Like it could be, I spent years of just researching the randomest shit, like the randomest shit the conspiracy shit. stuff and like Netflix honestly is still not nowhere near or any of these do- any of these like TV shows anything that's like like History Channel or any any of that stuff the BBC they're way behind on what the tr- they're not behind they just don't expose what the true fucking knowledge of things are mm-hmm. so there you gotta find the real knowledge you gotta find the people that do put it out there. Like I listen to the the Joe Rogan podcast every now and then. And he has some pretty interesting people on there. Oh yeah. Like once you going, once you start going into the David Ikes and to the the fucking Terrence McKenna's, yeah, man. to Terrence the Alex McKenna. Gray's. That's my boy right there, uh, Terrence yeah. McKenna. To the Alex Gray's and to the fucking. I haven't listened to Alex Gray in a long time. That's what it's down to. Yeah. Fucking some Alan Watts too. Alan Watts. <laughs> some Alan Watts, dude. I've been listening to look up this YouTube channel called uh, Academy of Ideas. I think. Academy of Ideas. Yeah, and it goes down and it breaks down like um, uh, psychology. Um, you know, different different people who were like um, they studied. Um, psychology they were psychologists or whatever but they were like the best of the best dude like they were like the jordans of psychology shit you know so it was like oh this person like speaks certain shit you know but they were like 
there were different views in psychology that, uh-huh. you know either contradicted or it makes sense a certain way but you know when you view it another way it like completely it depends on what way you're looking at yeah right? it's all it's, perspective it's, yeah it's, it's all perspective, perspective. It's, it's weird but you What's both ways both ways make kind of sense you know academy academy let me see I don't have, it'll pop up right now academy of ideas academy of ideas Academy, yeah, Academy of Ideas. That's crazy. That's the first thing that popped up on my. Yeah, Academy of Ideas, and then just look through the 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 questions, dude. The psychology of self sabotage and resistance, uh, Nietzsche and Jung. Oh, those are the contradicting. Psychology. Yeah, see, this is all stuff that. This this is all like, you listen to it like and you like really like focus on it. It'll have you thinking for a good amount of time. Yeah, like oh shit, like oh, okay, cool, 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 you know. And then it's it's a it's cool like exercise, dude. It's like cool exercise. You, you can just either get triggered. lost with it, yeah, or you can just pop it in like every once in a while and be like, oh, cool, cool, a little mental exercise. Yeah, because mm-hmm. some people fucking like I know for sure you'll get lost into it. You know? Oh yeah, I could imagine. I would want. Yeah. I think I would want to get really stoned and just yeah, yeah for sure. Myself for sure, watch it when you're like stoned. I was. That's that's my. Best I watched the document that we had. There used to be a documentary on YouTube. That was long. It was a five-hour documentary. Is it the Seedgeist stuff? Seedgeist? No. Seedgeist? No, I've watched those. I've watched Seedgeist 1, 2, and 3. Yeah, I See, like, that's oh, all the shit. When I first saw those, That's all like, the stuff that, like, I started watching that shit, like, in 2009. Yeah, early, early, early on the internet. Huh? Chimatica, that's another one. Chimatica. K-Y. Chimatica. K-Y-M-A-T-I-C-A. What, what, what was that one? And it kind of it kind of relates to what um what um um Zeitgeist yeah. Zeitgeist talks about with with uh, Peter Joseph. Okay. But it's more on like it goes into it brings out like Bruce Limpton. He's a he's a scientist, and he talks. He has a book called The Biology of Belief, and okay. he says that how we are are. In, how we are it's not our DNA that that that, that creates us it's our environment mm-hmm. we relate to our environment so that if he was born in your shoes at your time in your in your house basically with your surroundings he would be you mm-hmm. it had nothing to do with DNA our DNA adapts to our environment mm-hmm. so he taught like it's crazy how like we've been programmed for years how our food our substance our Everything that we see, talk about the evolution of man. How human beings are the only only ones that go through every form of life in our gi- in our gestate uh, gestation period. Mm-hmm. How we go through every form of life from being a single cell organism mm-hmm. to a multiple cell organism to a reptile to aquatic have aquatic gills, and this is all through like the moment of pregnancy. Mm-hmm. How a fetus goes through all those stages. And then it's finally a full mammal. So we go through it being... Uh, we have a little bit of every... Stage of life. Or every life stage of life. life within ourselves. Mm, okay. And, um... Okay, so he just kind of ponders on that shit. Like he kind of yeah. just thinks about that shit. And, and goes deeper it. with... with it. Uh, yeah, it's been a while since I've watched it. And like I said, I'm like... A lot of the stuff that we watch... Like, when I hear it, I'm like, oh, yeah, and it makes sense, and I remember it. Oh, dude, it's hard to retain. Unless you're re- studying it, yeah. it's hard to retain it. You, you get, like, um, like footnotes. Like, you yeah. keep footnotes, but it's hard to... Yeah. Unless you're constantly talking about it, it's hard to form a good conversation exactly. around it. That's why I say I'm just, like, a headline reader, because yeah. I remember the headlines, and I could go deeper into it once they start yeah. talking about it. Yeah, because, like, and unless you're constantly doing it, there'll be shit you forget about, like... I used to know a lot of like really cool like Terrence McKenna like conversations and mm-hmm. I really liked certain subjects he went into but I haven't heard it in a while so now I'm like fuck what was that one subject I have like a vague idea because I remember I I'm inter- I, I was interested at one point enough for me to remember mm-hmm. you know it's in there but it's like you know when you fucking have like, something you're talking about and it's like right at the tip of your tongue you just, yeah like you didn't need you someone know, to trigger fuck, that yeah. word Exactly, man. I there's a man. There's so many authors that. I don't know. What was homeboy? Bill Cooper, William Cooper. William Cooper. He, he has that uh, 
He did that book, uh, Behold a Pale, a Pale Horse. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. That right. one was fucking crazy. He, yeah, where it's, it's like dictates all the conspiracies. Or yeah. yeah. And then there's another dude that I used to listen to a lot, Jordan Maxwell. Maxwell. He talks about how in the 60s or 70s, he was confronted by an alien family. Oh, okay, okay. And how he was told that he was gonna, he was gonna be someone to put this knowledge out there. Mm-hmm. And how throughout the years of him being like going deeper and deeper into this, into his research and stuff, he was actually being helped by them. That there was, that there was, cons- there was a that. He had conspirators to uh, kill him, to mm-hmm. execute him, and every time someone would interfere and he, they would tell him, just follow, follow, like, listen to the voices, follow these instincts. Mm-hmm. And that most of the time, they would come at him right before. Oh, okay. Right before, like, right before something major was going to happen to him, they would come, they would, they would re- uh, reveal themselves to him. Jordan Maxwell's a good one. Michael Tassarian. Michael Tassarian. What did he? Tassarian is T S A R I O N. Tassarian. Yeah, he's a he's basically he's the person that Tom Hanks plays on the Da Vinci Code and on the Angels oh, and okay. Demons. Yeah. He's the he's who they call the symbologist. Yeah. They don't. They don't give him credit for it, but he's the one that has studied some symbolism, symbolism for years and knows like the, the cults that are behind it, the trends, and it goes down to like all the way down to the Pepsi logo to the Coca Cola logo. You could refer that back to like ancient times. Mm, okay. Okay. So he finds like connections with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Within these major corporations that used. To Think about it. These major corporations are the empires of ancient time. Yeah. They're the ones that are controlling everything. Fucking big pharma. The oil companies. The food companies. Man. They're controlling everything. Man. That's uh, that's part of the zeitgeist. The, the agenda. Yeah. The secret agenda. I forgot what it was called. The uh, world order shit. Yeah. Like that's all stuff that they're trying that that they're trying to do, but we'll never be able to if they if they haven't accomplished it by now, they're not going to. You don't think so? No. If they weren't able to do it when they had everyone ignorant before the internet, mm-hmm. the internet is basically what shifted the whole platform. The control type shit? It took the control away from them and it made all the information public made people that want to learn to learn because when tv came out it was still programmed mm-hmm. you know it was still controlled the internet had no filters like you could get across anything any information out there so you don't think that they can control that oh they could control masses they could control what if, what if they have the technology to do it what if it just became easier, man? I mean... Mm, it became easier on both platforms, though. You don't, you don't think it just... It did shift the balance? Maybe it balanced it. Maybe it helped balance it. Yeah. It didn't take away the power. It didn't take... It definitely... It, it, it definitely it made did, it more natural, maybe. It definitely did not take away the power. It just exposed it. Yeah. That's what the internet... That's what social media... That's what everyone... Everything's doing. And it's, it's exposing ourselves. We're exposing ourselves to ourselves. We are who we are. We're we're not hiding behind a veil no more. We're not hiding with this personality of who we want to be or what we're supposed to be. Yeah. It's at the point now where it's like you want to be a specific something, go out and fucking do it. All right. Go out and fucking research it and become it. Work your ass off to get it. But the whole control system, it's, it's, if it hasn't happened by now, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen because people are just becoming more, more aware, more conscious. I th- uh, yeah, I definitely see that. I see, like, 
an evolution in the way people people think. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. It's it's kind of um, crazy to think about like all these social like changes that have happened throughout let's say whatever since TV was invented or whatever. Oh yeah. You know. It shifted. It like that's that's when it was like on record or whatever or on radio. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So just to be able to like go back and see that the change in people's like you you think back and you're like, man, how can people how could people be have the majority of people have been like racist, you know? It was ignorance, it was and it's like popular. Yeah, it's it's weird. It was the know? norm. Like how how could that have it like it's hard for for us to fathom it, you know? You know how the same way that people are raised to hate another team or hate the people that go for that team. Yeah. Oh, like, don't go against the Angels because you're a Dodger fan. Yeah. Like don't tri- like black people because you're white. Yeah. yeah. Tribalism type of shit. Basically, you know, survival of the fittest and, you know, t- divide and conquer. Everything. The art of war is all within our society every day. Yeah, that's for sure. So, mainly what we're doing... Part of this awakening is realizing that we're not different at all. And what his difference is actually empowers my difference. Yeah. Doesn't take away, you know, whatever you bring to the table only... It, get, it, it gets to the point where you want to have something to bring to the table so you can indulge in what's already on the table. Yeah. Kind of thing. Like, those are, those are the tribes and those are the communities that we need to be around. You need to be around people that, like, push you to bring something. Push you to fucking push. And It's crazy when you think about, like, when you start thinking about how, how, like, you, I guess, unique people are in the sense that it took so many people in the past, so many people, like, your ancestors so much shit happened in all those lives had to have happened for you to be the person you are oh yeah you know aside Word. from whatever biological shit you know you, you were the fastest sperm whatever yeah aside from that like all the people in the past that made certain that led to your parents getting together mm-hmm. you know and the, you being born the it's trickle like, down of it, it's like there's no way you can not believe you are the only person like you're the only you you're you know there's no one like you there's no one ever gonna be like you right not even your brothers and sisters they're not gonna be like you no one's like you you know there's something special about you and like you're not above anyone because we're all fucking we're all that special we're all a piece we're all a piece of the puzzle it's like it's weird like put it this way my son he's seven he loves building puzzles Mm -hmm. got him from a 12 puzzle piece to like a hundred puzzle piece now. He loves doing Legos. Mm-hmm. Builds a whole fucking Lego set by himself now. Damn. Yeah. Like he came home like, you know, little stuff. Yeah. He's not, I'm not going to give him a whole fucking... What, what's that big old thing from Star Wars? The, the one? Oh, the Millennium Falcon? Yeah. No, the um, the, the round one. The, the, oh, the Death, Star. Death Star. I'm not going to have him build a Death Star. <laughs> Out of connectors and yeah, shit, yeah. but the stuff that are within his age bracket. How old is he? Seven. Oh shit. He's gonna be okay. seven this next month. Damn. Okay. So the stuff that's within his age bracket and a little bit above, he'll build like he it by himself. Really well. yeah. yeah, and he that's takes cool. pride in it. Yeah. But think about it like we are all part of this puzzle that is the fucking planet. Yeah. We we might not get accepted or get acknowledged as like wow we're that special. Mm-hmm. but once all those puzzle pieces are in place and you're missing mm-hmm. then that's when you're like the most important fucking thing that yeah like it could, it could be the top corner that's just a solid puzzle piece that's not even a detailed piece mm-hmm. but you're gonna it's not gonna be complete it's not gonna be complete and no other piece is gonna fit there mm-hmm. no yeah man I think people just gotta start seeing it that way man so people don't think they're important you know what? Like we have too much distractions going on to want 
to feed into our mental issues, which it's happening. You know, little that's gonna be the latest trend. The la the biggest trend for the last couple of years has been like health and mm-hmm. fitness. Mm-hmm. You know, with Nike coming out with just do it in the nineties. You know, it takes time. Everything takes time. But we're going on the thirty year mark of Nike bringing out their slogan of just do it. Mm-hmm. And that actually set off, when Nike brought that out, that actually set off a, like a trend mm-hmm. of just going out for a run. Yeah. People out here, did, people in L.A. don't fucking walk. People, you know, mm-hmm. people out here drive everywhere. So when that came out, it shifted the paradigm and it shifted the mentality of like, fuck it, I'll go do it. Or I could just walk there. Mm-hmm. Or let me just go for a run. That's been about... 30 years in the making now now it's health and fitness now you have all these gyms you have all these support groups now you have all these like different categories of it different categories of uh, health and fitness Mm -hmm. now it's like okay that's established what's next now it's our mental health Mm -hmm. you know because what people people talk about mental health and automatically it's like oh what's wrong you gotta you gotta see a therapist you gotta go to a psychiatrist Mm -hmm. it's taking that taboo-ness out of it and think and realizing that we all need therapy yeah man we all have trauma there's just such a big stigma on therapy you know because of that like you said you know and yeah definitely definitely the shift is changing man definitely not quick enough and like It, it here's the thing it's just it's happening at the time that it needs to happen for the people that need it to happen yeah if everybody were to shift their mindset from one from today to tomorrow yeah we would have a boom mm-hmm. and stuff but a lot of people will lose it people would not be able to shift the people are, are are stuck to the matrix people are their uh that the matrix is their life support yeah they've lived their whole life to live this to get there and now the they're there you want to unplug them yeah. and some people are comfortable with that. comfort is know, a big issue some people know they're stuck some people know they're stuck but hey this is comfortable yeah uh, i'm not saying everybody man but there are some stubborn ass people where you don't you don't even ra- like you don't rationalize how how someone can be stuck you know, I don't exactly. rationalize it exactly. because that's but not, I've, I've never been. It's a mental man. Here, here. But I also haven't dealt with what that person has dealt with. Exactly. Regardless and of what it is. We've all seen it. Yeah. Where, like we all it have is. it within our families. We all Something. have it close to us. You know? Like, I, at least I could say that I have it close to me. It's but, like, I mean, I don't know, man. I mean, maybe, that, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm strong enough. That, that, that that's the Because I don't know, what if my mind does change when I'm older and I'm dealing with shit that's like, end of life shit mm-hmm. what if I become like that because of that you know exactly it's, it, it would be the equivalent of someone who's young and dealing with you know existential existence and mm-hmm. they don't understand why they're here and why does it even matter to be here right you know everything's meaningless type of shit you know nihilist type shit and it's like I don't know that person maybe just thinks about things that are like they a, a older person thinks about or someone you know? the way I see it is that all our traumas all our thoughts all our emotions all our situations kind of build a roadmap and build mazes within our mind yeah and we build up these walls that every time something gets triggered or something tends to lead us there mm-hmm. it, it shifts us into a whole other direction. So the only way through the way, only way out of it is through it. Yeah. And there hasn't been too many. It's not hip to be emotional. It's not hip to yeah. be. It's hip to have big old fucking muscles, but it's not hip to have a big fucking musk. How to work out your brain? People don't. People know how to do push-ups. People don't know how to do, you know, mental. brain mental mental, mental, mental exercises. exercises. Yeah. Exactly. There are so many fucking brain exercises, uh, brain games that you could just mm-hmm. that trigger and get your mind going. No, and I, I totally fucking I agree with you on that, man. But yeah, like it's it's hard because the mind is a very fucking tricky thing. Like 
me being so creative and you know us being artists and being able to see stuff being created and know that we can create things we still go through our moments of depression where we're just like fuck we don't see our way out and we just keep digging a deeper yeah. hole we're, we're, we're human yeah i mean i don't know like after taking like those mushrooms man i, I pretty much figured out like I guess not figured out, like, but was able to, like, work out certain shit that I ignored as far as the person that I, I was. Like, yeah. my emotions, the way of dealing with emotions, you know? Definitely. All that stuff was not even, even close to fucking... I never thought about that. Ever, ever. Like, I've not one single time thought about, oh, how, how am I feeling today? Like, that what part. emotion am I feeling right now? That part. Never fucking in my life before that. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe if I'm, like, going through, like, heavy shit, you know, breakup or whatever. But that's the only time I felt... Okay yeah, because that's when you're in your feels. That's when you're, like, yeah, paying that's attention. Like, that's when it's, like, boom, hitting you in the fucking face. That's, 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 that's when that's it's too late. That, yeah. That, you're not prepared for you it. You know, you get you, a breakup or, you know, you lose a loved one. That fucking emotion is hitting you in the fucking heart, you know? But, like, smaller situations where it's like, let's say you're having an argument with the loved one, uh -huh. you know? You, you would just think you're angry at that person, but you don't understand, like, other emotions you're feeling. You think you're angry because that person's being an asshole, but maybe you feel bad because this person's always being an asshole to you, and they never ask you, hey, how do you feel? Mm -hmm. You know, or whatever. Like, whatever, whatever you're dealing with. But now, instead of you, like, maybe trying to figure out the emotions and dealing with them and just like being with them uh -huh. you get mad because you're, you're comfortable being mad you know right at least that's how i felt like oh, man you're just comfortable being mad because you know how to be mad you feel you, comfortable being mad instead of it's your it's, it's your go-to yeah that's my go-to dude like that was, it's your go-to that was my safety you know or happy or just being happy and like ignoring it and just like oh, i'm gonna go play video games i'm gonna full, go full uh paradigm shift different different uh different extremes but always at your extremes never balanced yeah, never, never balanced dude never like not dealing with emotions pretty much yeah and then and then i even dove, dove deeper i was like why why do, why do i do that uh -huh. and then i was like oh shit you know maybe it was because growing up you had a, your parents were dealing with a lot of fucking shit and you were just done with it and you like closed off and you just never unclosed. Mm -hmm. You just closed off at an early age, 14, 15, whatever. You and you never just opened never that. opened up again. You just stayed closed. And your close was either mad, happy, or ignoring it. That was it. Yo. You know, just fucking dealing with video games and focusing on art. And that's it. Like, you, you closed off in that. Like, with me... Your emotions were here. Yeah, exactly. You just it. focused in on that. <laughs> like, with me, for the longest, like... Like, I knew how to express my emotions, mm -hmm. but I just never, I never found a reason. I never found, uh, I never looked at it as, like, something that, that was going to heal. Yeah. I never looked at it as, like, a, a go-to. Yeah. You know, for me, it was more of a, let me, okay, I'm, I'm lacking on this, or I feel you sentimental or emotional about this let me shift my attention and go ham on this fucking painting or go ham on fucking you know whatever on being something being something that people admire going and getting that admirance you know going and feeding your ego basically yeah you know have it be in a positive or negative way because that's a big mis misconception that we shouldn't have egotistical traits it's like the, the ego death is one thing, but having these traits of wanting to be, not necessarily first, but wanting to be superior to who you were prior, mm -hmm. has to have some kind of selflessness. It, it, yeah. It's not selfishness, it's self, you know, it's, it's like... Well, I mean, it's that whole, like you said, the paradigm of, it, is there an ego death, really? Yeah. Or is your belief in ego death? Still it, your belief ego. of it yeah exactly that's still an ego exactly you, you believe you're you're above ego that's still ego thinking that's exactly above ego. Uh, that's you know? actually a really good way i've never <laughs> yeah, thought about it like that it's just like oh okay that's like so one of the things is knowing how to you gotta have balance dude there's no way you can balance. kill ego 
You gotta have balance. Balance and knowing how to when, knowing when to exercise that, yeah. knowing where and when to use that, like honing in. Like it's funny because Marvel is like one of the biggest things right now. All these fucking superheroes, and what I like about it is how relative it is to the most common human fucking person, mm-hmm. or you know how all these mutants they call them mutants, but you see these people with autism that trait that have similar traits to what they call these mutants. Yeah. You know, it's like, are they just a superior fucking form of us? Mm-hmm. And are there certain traits in who they are and what they are that we relate to and that are actually part of us? Yeah, I see that. You know, I think that mushroom, like like I was saying earlier, that it's a like a vitamin. I feel that people that have like mental issues should oh, can benefit from it. Yeah, yeah. I I don't. You know. I, I think we talked about that last time too. Yeah, like I I definitely. I, I wish I wish that there could be a way to navigate through it where mm-hmm. it can be it can be beneficial always you know like yeah I I, I, I think the best way out of it is I only know me man yeah and then like Everyone's every time different. I'm asked oh like maybe I should try it you know I'd be like dude I don't want to fucking tell you yeah because no I can't tell you yeah because I only know the experience I felt me. Yeah. I only know what I felt. And I know this shit is not... For everyone. It's like... It's not for... It's, I don't know your mind. I think what the full... What if you have schizophrenia in your fucking family? And that shit triggers it. Which yeah. it can. Or you it can cure it. Or it can cure it. You know? But is that something I want to fucking... It's like it. giving someone a fucking loaded gun. Yeah, you don't want to be the... Yeah, do I want to be the person to give you that gun? What if you shoot yourself in the fucking face? Yeah. You know, because, hey, this gun's faulty. It can't fucking shoot you in the fucking face. It's like, uh, I don't know. It, it kind of goes <laughs> back to that mentality of, like, giving giving a bum a dollar. Mm-hmm. Like, what? Is he gonna, what's yeah, he going to really use it for? With the best intentions, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I it's kind of doing things with the best intentions. Uh, 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 I, can, I can give you my take and my knowledge and what yeah. I've learned as my, here, and my best intentions. Because maybe it'll give you the curiosity to check it out. Exactly. And think and study it yourself and figure out if this is something you think you can do. And I, That's all I ever tell anybody. Just study, man. Like, That's I it. think the best approach towards that is definitely microdosing. Yeah, a lot of people start, like, I've heard a lot more people start off like that, microdosing. Just because it's not a hallucinogenic experience. At that point, right? Yeah. It's, but, it's nowhere near, it's nowhere near even any kind of medicinal experience it's yeah. really not an experience at all it's a longevity shift within your system within your body that yeah. you just consciously start thinking differently and start taking different direction yeah I, like I've had some of my most aha moments while I'm on shrooms do you feel like you're a little more open minded because of because of your microdosing definitely like you feel like you're, you're up to you know trying out more different things you know I think with me is more that I'm more at peace mm-hmm. and I get out of my way like like you told me earlier you're like at the end of the day I'm not fucking stressed and exhausted I'm exactly like, and kind of re- relieved and like serene. and I'm the I'm the serene. type of guy that like I could set up 50,000 different scenarios with just a sentence that somebody mm-hmm. gives me or a remark mm-hmm. that somebody gives me, you know? Mm-hmm. Some, somebody says something or somebody doesn't say something, then I'm already 50 scenarios in of why and how and why not kind, yeah. of, kind of thing. It's just like, I kind of feel like... I think by this point everyone's seen fucking Endgame and Infinity War. If not, spoiler alert! I, I don't think people. <laughs> nah, well, this is from Infinity War, yeah. where where um Doctor Strange is like going into the different dimensions and figuring out like the different possibilities of, of where they could win kind yeah. of thing. That's how my head feels sometimes. Yeah. That's just like fuck this, this, and 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 this, yeah, and this, and this. Really thinking. I'm thinking 50 steps ahead and I haven't even taken the first step. Mm-hmm. Or, the, you know, and it kind of goes into scenarios of 
what other people, how, like, your communication with other people. Like, I grew up as an only child, so I create, I, I, I learned at a young age to create shitload of scenarios within myself just to get through my day. Yeah. You know, just to not be bored. To keep yourself busy. Yup. So now it's like, it plays back, and now my mind just naturally goes there, and it's so easy to just be present, but be... So far out, yeah. you know, of what the... So be present, but be within yourself at the same time, right? Be deep within myself, where yeah. I'm, like, million light years ahead. Like, thinking of shit, and... It's, it's good, because some of... Part of, part of uh, like, reaching goals is lo- learning how to visualize them and manifest them. Yeah. But it's bad when you're, manif- you know, visualizing and manifesting negative things. So I think... That's my thing. Like I know the, the how. Mm-hmm. Is just knowing. What to put into it, what kind of thoughts. Deprogramming. What we, been programmed, to learn and, reprogramming what we, want to learn, what we what's gonna make us better. Last a couple of weeks ago, I was interviewed by. Uh by like a Instagram page they do kind of like a podcast interview type of thing mm-hmm. and uh, I think he's based in Miami it's called uh, La Frontera Supply or something oh dope and uh, his little podcast or whatever like a little interview not the podcast the interviews he does the interviews it was it's called Two Chat Thursday and he sent me a couple questions to, to answer to you know so he can do his little piece and he in the, in the question has said, mm-hmm. um, "How is cultura visible? How is your cultura, or what is your cultura, and how is it visible in your artwork somewhere along mm. those lines?" And when I was like, "What the fuck does like? I know culture in a sense, but I was like, man, what's cultura in Spanish?" Like, first of all, I was like, what does that mean for a Spanish speaker? Mm-hmm. What does cultura mean? You know, I know what culture means, but how it, is it interpreted different in Spanish, you know? So mm-hmm. when I looked it up, it just asked, like, it's pretty much like everything that makes up you. You know, your so the way you socially grew up, you know, your 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 environment, your interest, mm-hmm. you know, your your likes type of shit so I was like okay and then I thought about it I was like when I first heard when I first read the sentence I read that cultura and I thought oh my Mexican heritage right that's the first thing I thought about and then I was like wait but that can't just be it you know I was like that's why I had to look it up I was like maybe it means something else because it can't just be my Mexican heritage like that can't just be all we are that's me because that you know I've I've been here since I was five Mm -hmm. you know it's like yeah, I have my Mexican heritage, but that's not all me. You know, I grew up differently. So it was it was kind of hard to, like... Define it. Define it, you know? But the best thing I, I could tell him, I was like, well, I have a large portion of my morals and values are because of my Mexican culture. Mm-hmm. But I, I like to think that my culture was developed by whatever, graffiti, exactly where I grew up. You know, mm-hmm. where I grew up in my interests, graffiti, hip hop, basketball, whatever. Yeah, know. our culture is what we see. Our culture is the neighbors that we have. Our culture is the. Yeah, so I was like, man, I don't know, man. Like, I can't just. Because I thought about it, I was like, I don't have any Mexican heritage stuff in my artwork, really. Because we have it within ourselves. Too you much. know, it's like, this is like a blend of yeah. just shit that I've done. You know, and it's like. If you look at my entire body of work, it's just shit that interests me. Right. That's it. You know, and com- I think commissions we, here or there, but the rest is I just think we purposely, interest. like, we don't stray too far away, but we stray away in, like, our visual, like, our final presentation. Because at the end of the day, like, these are your final presentation. Whether they're mm-hmm. finished or not, this is what you will be categorized for as an artist basically so for us to like really indulge because i have pieces that i work on that are very cultural and i love it because i grew up with it 
but they're only cultural visually. Mm-hmm. They're only cultural in like in the form that it's a fucking nopal that I'm painting, or there's yeah. a freaking fr- folklorico dancer that I'm painting. They're cultural in the fact that like the color and it relates to that. Yeah. But as in like our actual day to day, your culture, my culture of who I am, it's yeah. like it's a mind fuck of everything, and yeah. that's actually a. That's actually something that I do want to start putting deeper into my artwork. Because I do a lot of, uh, like, I was just thinking about that on the way over here. Uh, how, like, the music culture that we have. How, like, especially being here in L.A., like, we have such a diverse music culture. Mm-hmm. I was telling you earlier, I was listening to Breakfast with the Beatles, which is an actual live event that goes on in Seal Beach at a bar, restaurant kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Where they have cover bands that play that cover the Beatles. Oh, cool. But they play it on the station all morning to like oh. noon, I think. Ooh, cool. So it's called Breakfast with the Beatles and it's usually Sunday morning. And they were playing like the Sgt. Pepper's album, which to me is one of their fucking greatest fucking albums. <laughs> but then I started thinking like what other albums, what other what other records and what other albums are fucking like just in there that that I I would represent with and if I were to compile that and reproduce it, say if I were to make music, what will inspire me into doing it? Yeah. Same way that how we make art, who inspires. Right now we're painting who inspires us. Mm-hmm. Later on in life we're gonna be painting what inspires us. These are all just steps. Yeah. You know, so like right now it's a visual form of who inspires us. Cause this is what your painting is. You know, you have your you have your 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 uh, masters of arts. You have your masters of minds, and you have your motivation, your 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 people hands on that that you dealt with. That that's a big thing too. Like people that we that feed us energy. Yeah, hands yeah, on. Definitely. Because those leave a, like all these we've never fucking had a formal conversation with, but they do influence from what they left behind. Yeah. You know, it's like everything that you have in here is people that influence you. Yeah, yeah, definitely with things. Yeah. Like things that in, have influenced me or inspired me or I I feel like I related to in a sense mm-hmm. some way or another. Related. So it's it at the same time it's our struggle to identify ourselves. Yeah. Basically. Like if if they were to tell if you were to put this into music form, you would have records and albums. I'm kinda of visualizing the intro of uh, Straight Out of Compton when uh Dre has his headphones on and he has all the vinyls, all the records just laid mm-hmm. out. That's their that's their artist inspiration. Yeah, that's their that's their routine. Yeah. Yeah. So if I were to put it like that, like think about it for us, like I started thinking about like who would like what are major albums that like that's music wise, that's what I've I've been getting into recently is trying to listen to full albums. Yeah. Like albums that are just life changing. The Sgt. Pepper's album was one that I was listening to on the way over here. I'm like, fuck, I never really, like, listen to it, listen to it and just take it for what it is, that up and down, yeah. that, you know, that roller coaster of a ride. Yeah, and then, like, Bohemian Rhapsody. That's another one. Queen is fucking amazing. Mm-hmm. And then it shifts into, like, Illmatic. You know, Nas, that fucking album that he made is life-changing to yeah. a lot of people. And then it shifts into... Like and this is all just playing in my head, playing those fucking fifty thousand scenarios that strange that Doctor Strange is fucking doing. So that's how my head was going earlier, and just thinking like, when, what was my introduction to these genres? My introduction to hip hop was actually pretty pretty crazy, because I never like at home it was always rancheras, Spanish music, and that was it. Mm-hmm. Like, I really... If it was, like, English music, it was whatever, like, commercial music was out. Yeah. That was it. And my introduction to hip-hop was... a rap was... Me and my cousin were playing up and down on our box. I live on a dead end street, so we pretty much ran the whole fucking street, like... Our backyard. Mm-hmm. You know? The, there wasn't really too much traffic. It was a dead end street. The whole fucking... The street, the sidewalks, and our driveway was our was our playground, basically. Was playground, yeah. And there used to be some tweakers that lived down the street, and I remember we found one of the one one of their stashes, 
and it was literally like a stack like this tall of like 20 plus CDs and still in their cases they're open but that was like my first introduction to rap and to hip hop and all that I didn't know who the fuck these were you just I, saw a stack I just saw a stack of CDs we brought them home cause they were literally in a bush yeah like underneath and we kinda knew who, who they were so we just took them like fuck it they mm -hmm. they be jacking shit all the time all the time huh so they we probably just, were jacked yeah yeah exactly <laughs> yeah so we took them and like I don't remember all of the CDs. All I remember is like the covers of them. Yeah. I remember seeing uh, the DPG, the Dog Pound cover with the with the with the paw on there. I remember seeing uh, the Born to Die, the big the Biggie fucking oh, okay, yeah. album with the little baby on there. Yeah. I remember. The East 1999 uh, Bone Thugs on there. I think the Chronic 2001. No, the the Chronic might maybe the original because this was like in the 90s. Shit. Okay. And I remember seeing all that, and that was like my first introduction. I still didn't know who the fuck they were. Yeah. I still probably played the music and didn't understand it or didn't relate to it. Yeah. But that was like my first introduction. All of those being Talk. fucking awesome fucking albums in the in their own. Yeah. So, like, I could visually go back to remembering that. Other stuff, like, I could really, I could visually go back to, like, buying my first fucking tape or CD yeah. at the fucking swap meet. And that was, like, Spanish music always, because... You grew up with it. I grew up with it, plus the only, the only, like, sound system that we had was either the stereo inside the house or the stereo inside the, inside In the, the car. car. Yeah. And I knew I was never going to get any airtime to play my stuff. Yeah. So what I would do is try to compromise with, okay, well, this is Spanish, and I guess I like this, and I guess my parents would like this, yeah. so let me get this kind yeah. of thing. So that's how it was like at first for me. So that's where my culture would come from, yeah. from an uh, influence of all that. It's like, it, that's who you are. It's everything that's, that's around you, all your environment. Like, that's kind of how I'm, like, very colorful in my artwork. Yeah. I grew up around... I grew up around um, like in the in the in the candy industry basically. Oh, okay. My parents used to sell fruit, vegetables, candies, yeah. like a little store on wheels basically. Yeah. So I grew up seeing candy wrappers. I grew up seeing all the different colors. packaging, yeah. all the different colors for that. Seeing the layouts, you know, going to these stores and just seeing layouts of like the walls were green and yellow. You know, the freaking rappers were all these extra colors to, to grab your attention. So I was always amazed by that. Like, the, my... I don't even remember the commercial. But it was that Popsicle commercial with the dog. It was one of those ice cream ones. And when they started coming out in different colors, those those pop, those ice cream Popsicles that would come out. I like, think so. I and the kids, and the kids like... The colors, Duke. The colors. <laughs> I think so. And then the dog just looks at him like, I'm colorblind, kid. Oh. <laughs> no, I don't remember. It's a commercial. <laughs> and like, it'd be good. It's just fucking hilarious. Because to me, it was always like, that just like, that was always my, my, my moment. Mm -hmm. That was always, that's always my thought when I go, when I see paintings, when I see artwork. It's like, dude, the colors. Mm -hmm. The vibrancy, the, the reference. Like, especially in Mexican culture where it's all about vibrant colors. Yeah. Like, I used to love going to Mexico and just going to all the, like, the, the artesano places or all the um, cultural places where they sell stuff because you would see the sarapes all drip multicolor. Yeah. You would see the toys all hand-painted and multicolored. Yeah, very bright, man. All that stuff. Like, that's what influenced me in my culture of, like, art. It's throwing those vibrant colors. Throwing colors that you normally wouldn't even see there together, together and very, having them be very vibrant, not, 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 not kind of fade in having them jump at you. Yeah. I wish I, w I would have studied color a lot more at a younger age. I didn't really notice, like, all the colors up until, like, graffiti. Yeah. Like, graffiti when I, was when big. I, when, I finally, when I got into it. I mean, I always liked, like, anime when I was when I was young. Right. And, I mean, anime has bright colors and, like, it's attractive, mm -hmm. but I was attracted more to, like, the cartoony aspect of it. Right. Like, the know, layout, the anime. Maybe the stories or whatever, you know. All that stuff. 
But it wasn't until I fucking saw graffiti and was introduced to graffiti where I fucking fell in love with the the freeing aspect of it. It was so freeing. There was no fucking rules to the letters. There was no rules. Yeah. There was some rules in basic design, you know, of it. But overall, like, it was so too individual to that person. Unless the person was obviously copying somebody's stuff. Right, exactly. But I always thought, like, oh, man, these things are so unique to each person who does it. Like, it's their handwriting type of shit, you know? It's like, you write your name a certain way, no one else can write your name a certain, that way. Exactly. And that's the way And I we do it because of certain things. Like, yeah, that's the way I saw the graffiti. I was like, man, it's so... And now, like, they're adding color, and then, like, dude, that shit, that shit made me fall in love with art, dude. Fall in love with all of it. All mm-hmm. of it. Graffiti, all of it. Like, I was... Yeah, like with me, I would see it on the freeways. I would see it on the freeways. And, Dude, then, and then after finding out, like after that, finding it everywhere, like on the freeways, on the street, everywhere yeah. you saw something unique, I was like, I, I felt like I was, I saw a whole new world. Right. You know? And I always see it every time I talk to people, like let's say it's a girl or somebody who I'm like getting to know or whatever, uh-huh. you know? Like like my wife, she didn't, she knew about graffiti, but she didn't know. Until you started the breaking history, it down the for history her. history of graffiti or like you know what thing what differences in graffiti that there is you mm-hmm. know and the stories each area has and when you look at a wall it'll tell you a story based on who's crossed who's who out there. or whatever you know just explaining that to someone oh and yeah seeing them fall in love with it too in, admire like, it at least yeah. yeah no like i'm probably not enough to do it but enough, but enough to, to respect enough, it yeah respect it and like take it for what it really yeah, is yeah you know it was like Oh man, that's exactly how I felt when I first saw it, you know? It's funny because a while ago we were trying to put together like a whole like community collective thing for the art. <laughs> one of our, one of the person that was working with us, she was going to uh, UCLA at the time. Mm-hmm. And I remember we went out there t- for a, well, like a introduction, uh, like the, the before opening, before the first okay, day, like, like uh, the orientation. Orientation, kind of thing. yeah. And we weren't signing up. We just went there to see how they work things. And on the way over there, I was with, with one of the homies at the time. And we were just calling out spots. Like, hey, look at that ledge. Look at that heaven. Look at that yeah. rooftop. Look at that fucking... Yeah. Look at that wall right there. Look at that fucking pole. Yeah. And she was in the back just like tripping out on us. She's like, it's crazy how you guys see everything as a canvas. Uh-huh. How that building right there is a canvas. How that freaking bus driving by is a canvas. Like... It's not to somebody, somebody with a different perspective brings it to you, to your attention, that you're like, oh, shit. You don't notice it. Yeah. You don't notice it. Yeah. And then, I mean, I'm sure your lady notices spots that are, like, visually appealing. Because, exactly. Because you looked for it for so long. Mm-hmm. Now, when she's alone, she, she sees it, and she's yeah. going to be like, oh, shit, like. You know, now they're aware that that world exists, mm-hmm. and like, it's like you can't help but notice it. Like just yesterday, we were watching. Uh, I was putting a playlist together of just like modern and classic rock, all like the hits and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I put. Uh, I was watching the Nirvana "Smells Like Teen Spirit" uh, music video, mm-hmm. and I have never. I've watched it a thousand times. Never paid. You're always paying attention to something else. Yeah. So this time I seen it, and I seen uh, Dave Grohl on the. Uh, on the drum set, and he was playing when they passed the camera by it on the dr- on the on the bass drum. There's a big shaka tag on there. What? Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. And I it's tripped out. I tripped out because I just seen it. I'm like, it's just big and bold right on the drum set, like big and big and white right there. And then I went back. I'm like, wait, is that really what the fuck I think it's like? Every, every band puts their logo on there, but for them to put shaka on that shit, it's like mm-hmm. they knew. They knew like what an, what an impact that that had on there because they could have easily removed it or even edited it out if it, yeah. if it was done unofficial. But they they wanted him to do that basically, and they wanted that shit to stand out and traject and transcend fucking years, yeah, years. Because I just caught on to it. And I've watched that music video and heard that song a bunch of times before. Exactly. Yeah, it's and like when. When you watch movies and you notice the graffiti in the back of exactly. the movies, you're like, oh shit, look, 
Like, like, I know that, that person was around that time. Or you yeah. know what area of that town is, they're in because yeah. cause of the tags. Because of the tags, yeah. Yeah, like not not that long ago, I went to uh, to this graffiti art show that, that was going on in Inglewood. Mm-hmm. And I met some painter, Ash. And it was trippy because I went in there by myself. I hadn't been to a graph show in a long time. Mm-hmm. I don't know the loop. I'm out the loop already. I don't even do mm-hmm. graph. But I was just there to network. And for me in the path, it was always like, you never want to roll up alone. You never want to get caught slipping. You never want to fucking, you know, network with the wrong people, basically. Especially like in graphs, there's so much fucking beef. Yeah. That you don't know who the fucking you're talking to or who the fuck you might run into. Yeah, who has beef with who? Yeah, so I just got there. I went, I got there and I just started handing stickers out to everyone. And I handed it one to one dude and... And he's like, all right, cool, thank you. He looked the most banged out fool right there, the mm-hmm. scariest motherfucker, the one that you just wanted to stay away. He was the one painting. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, cool, I just gave him the stickers and kept walking. It was kind of kind of slow at the beginning, so I went back to the car and just chilled. And I was doing that, I was looking up, like, people that were hashtagging that location, hashtagging that, uh, that, uh, the show. The show. Yeah. So I seen that homeboy that was doing the wall hashtagged it so I'm looking through his page and this fool tattoos mm-hmm. and he does lettering tattoos so I'm like oh shit I have an end I have an end now with like sparking a conversation basically mm-hmm. so when I went back I started talking to him and this fool just started chopping it up with me like he's fucking known me for years mm-hmm. the most banged out motherfucker they were all tatted up and everything like face all tatted and everything people were just kind of staying away from him and this fool was just yeah. Kicking it the whole time we were just chilling, fucking chopping it up, and he ended up being a cool ass fucking dude. Cool dude. Hell yeah. Yeah, man. Like, some people are fucking. And just putting the energy out there. Yeah. Yeah. I, def- I definitely believe in, like, doing the whole positive, you know, keeping, like, positive or, like, having, like, a positive energy to you. Mm-hmm. To you will definitely change. Ca- yeah, carrying yourself that way. Yeah. I always, I always, like, I saw it, like, um, every time I think of that, I think of, like, um, you ever see that uh, Bug's Life movie? Uh-huh. That scene where the bug, the little mosquito is attracted to the, to the little bug zapper. And it's like, oh, the oh, bug's yeah. so beautiful. Our, and, then, and, then, and then it dies or whatever. Our right? beacon. Yeah. So that's, that's the way I saw it. I was like, oh, fuck. Maybe, maybe if you generate enough positive light, you can attract people to you. You know, like that light attracted that mosquito. Like you be an attractor, a beacon and attract, too, and attract people that are like positive. Too. Yeah, definitely. And, and you're not, you're gonna have that one person that's gonna fucking be, you know, a bad person. You know, you're gonna attract good and bad. You know, but if you, if you maneuver through the bad people, you're mm-hmm. gonna get a lot of really fucking good people oh, that yeah. are gonna both not both gonna be better persons themselves you know but are gonna help you be a better person yourself like you know you're gonna help each other it's gonna yeah yeah, it's gonna grow from there you're gonna grow as a person because you create your community yeah that's one of those aha moments that I had when I was um when I was shrooming Mm -hmm. and it was funny because my girl was laughing at me because we had we took a Vegas trip last year and Mm -hmm. honestly we spent one whole day just in the room Mm-hmm. Like just shrooming and just we we were we were blessed enough to have a like you manifest everything because mm-hmm. we got that that trip for free we all we had to do is just get there basically and take care of our own expenses mm-hmm. but we didn't know what to expect we were just gonna be blessed with whatever the fuck we got yeah we got like the perfect room the perfect view the perfect everything that we didn't even have to leave the room mm-hmm. we had a we were right in the center of the strip. We were at Treasure Island, and we had the top because we had a smoking room, so we, they put us way up on top. And the view that we had, you could see straight down into the street mm-hmm. and see everybody walking. You could see straight across, uh, across the street, and in between two, um, two hotels. So our view wasn't just a hotel, but in between two of those hotels, you could see. The far out, you could see you could see the Vegas airport mm. and the distance, and you could see the airplanes take off. You could see the mountains behind it. We had a good amount of uh, like view space where mm. it wasn't like 
enclosed. And to shroom out, you need a lot of a lot of distance in between it. Like that's part of like the being at ease part of that. That you could see out in the distance and be able to zoom in. Like I was zooming into those. Like I could probably pinpoint who was sitting in those fucking in the seats in the seats you know you feel yeah. like that you yeah. might not see them per person but you just feel okay there's an energy there mm-hmm. there's there's a, there's a person there yeah. and you just feel that energy from like a distance and still be able to bring it back in and just be in my in my space in myself yeah so i was i was in the shower and i was just fucking like in my own meditation fucking moment mm-hmm. and i had the aha moment of what what the term it takes it 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 takes a village means you know when they say it takes a village to to raise a child yeah like a child doesn't necessarily have to be a human being that's a kid or that a baby a child could be your your painting a child could be your your uh, your house your community your society your collective mm-hmm. you know your job your career your brand yeah branding yourself you know that to me, that was my child. Mm-hmm. When when I was thinking on this, so it's like, fuck, it's true. It does take a community, and everyone has to contribute something. Yeah. Everything that we've done, all our artwork, we we know our techniques because we've seen other people do them. Yeah. Or you know, we trial and error, trial and error. You know, it's like you see other, you get, we just absorb other stuff and use what what does benefit us and throw away what doesn't benefit us. So it's part of that, like, the whole community aspect of, like, everyone playing the role required to make, to have that grander purpose, that greater purpose of things. Yeah. Definitely, man. You could see it as, like, a, I, don't, I don't know if you felt this, but the first time I did the mushrooms, I felt that in, in water feel, where you feel like you're in water, but it's not water, it's, like, like energy, mm-hmm. like, you feel like you're doing this constantly. Oh, like yeah. You're, you're, like you're, you're resonating. Like, you're vibrating. Yeah, like you're in... I don't know. Like in a boat. Like you're in a boat. Mm-hmm. You know how the boat kind of sways with, with the water? <coughs> like yeah. your whole body feels that. So when I felt that, I was like, man. I was thinking like after it. Like every time I like think back at it, I was like, man. Because there were other people in the room. And there were other people in mushrooms. Mm-hmm. And every time they would move, I would feel like ripples hit my my body type shit you know mm-hmm. it wasn't like a physical feel but i felt that you know the shift. i would feel things the environment shift exactly you know with everybody in, in in the room you know luckily everybody was okay but i could definitely see when people have the energy bad trips you're, you're or have more, bad energy like you can feel when someone's like in a bad mood you're more you know? sensitive to it and there's times that you want to be closer to them there's times that you want to be further from them yeah there's times that yeah you f- like you see their negative energy and you feel like I could help them yeah and there's times that you're like so much in yourself that you're like fuck fuck helping them I need to help myself first yeah and kind of go from there man I gotta take a break <laughs> I'll take a, a break yeah. real quick. well actually we can, we can you wanna wrap it up yeah yeah it's, we're at two hours I'm down so uh we can wrap it up um, thank you again for coming out, man. Appreciate and, uh, it. Episode twenty two. We're, we're, we're uh, you're welcome to come back. Uh, you know, I'll be back yeah, real soon. For sure. Thank you for uh, coming out. And this was an awesome conversation, man. I'm uh, excited yeah. for this to come out already. Definitely. So, thank you. Let's man. get it going. Bye, thank you, brother. Yeah, man. Uh, we'll, we'll go to the restaurant. Yeah, let me. We'll just set up. Uh, I just want you to. It's all in your head, it's all in your head.